Only two pour in for screaming Lord Such, who was found dead at his home in northwest London. His girlfriend found the 58-year-old hanged at the flat in Harrow. David Such formed the monster raving loony party in 1963. He'd been suffering depression after the death of his mother two years ago. Politics may have been his public face, but his closest friends were charity workers and musicians. Today, former Stones drummer Carlo Little was one of the first to arrive at his home in South Harrow. The girlfriend who found his body waited in her van, unable to get in. Until the post-mortem tomorrow, the house is sealed. I can't go in there, and so um, we're going away now. So. How about that? It all began in 1963. David Such, the musician, became screaming Lord Such, the politician. Lord David Edward Such. Looney. He led the official monster raving loony party in 40 elections. His slogan, vote for insanity, you know it makes sense. Lord Such was the leader of a national political party and stood in elections all over the country. But this was his natural constituency, the junk shops and cafes of South Harrow High Street. Well, it's very poignant that this was in our uh, outside cupboard for him to collect because he um, hadn't paid for it yet, but he would have come back this week to get it. And this is the sort of things we used to save for him. Very appropriate for Monster Raving Looney Party, Monster in my pocket. And uh, he'd have given this away to somebody, along with all little bits and bobs like this. i say any animal print stuff that would have gone to make up something. Anything weird and wacky. David Such and Keith Furness were planning to set up a business, a fancy dress shop for Millennium Night. There was no hint of depression when Such made what turned out to be his final public appearance in Brixton last week. But friends say he was anxious about higher deposits being charged to election candidates and upset about the death two weeks ago of his late mother's Yorkshire Terrier, Rosie. He said, what with my mum? We're now Rosie, what next? Screaming Lord Such was the party leader who lived at number 10. It was only Parkfield Road, but today outside a policeman stood guard. In South Harrow, this is Simon Harris for London Today. And joining me now from Wembley is Lord Such's partner Yvonne Elwoods and longtime band member and former Rolling Stone Carlo Little. Um, Yvonne, if I can come to you first, thank you very much indeed for talking to me because I know this, this must be a difficult time. But everyone's been paying tributes to Lord Such today. What sort of a, a person was he? Well, as you know, he was, he was unique because he was the, the world's only rock and roll politician. Um, he's going to be very sadly missed and irreplaceable. Carlo, um, now you appeared in the video of, uh, of Lord Such's last performance. Um, yes, um, he appeared with my band last Thursday at the Brixton Academy. I asked him to come along and do a couple of songs with uh, the band. And whenever I asked him to do that, he always came, never asked for anything, just always turned up. And um, whenever he came on stage, the atmosphere always lifted, you know, I always felt good about when he came on. You got a sort of good buzz about it, and just in general, it lifted. And the same when he came into a room or a party or anything like that. I mean, he was just a character, and um, we, we started off together in 1960. We started the rock and roll our careers together. So, where did you first meet him then, Carla? Well, I first met him in a, in a coffee bar um, in Sudbury, Wembley, uh, my hometown, and um, we, we got on well together. We found we hit, we had a, a liking for the same sort of music, and we decided to form a band. I was a, a, a drummer out of the army, um, just been demobbed, and I said, I'm going to start a rock and roll band, and he said, I'll come in with you. I said, fine, and that's what we did. But uh, and from that day, you know, day one, I, I realised he was a character and just felt good about, you know, seeing him. You always lifted your spirits and just laughed and joked, laughed and joked. And that's how he was for the last 40 years. And uh, I just still haven't really come to terms with uh, what's happened and uh, because, because it was him, you know. It was a laugh and a joker, Yvonne, but obviously there was something a little darker behind that laughing and joking. Um, well, actually, his, his last public performance was at Wales on Saturday night. We spent the weekend at Wales. He was working there. And, um, and he was still laughing and joking um, that weekend. So there was no indication that he, that he may have been depressed? He had, he had been suffering from depression for many, many years, long before his mother died. And um, it was a battle that, in the end, he just couldn't fight any longer. Well, Yvonne, thank you very much indeed for talking to me and you too, Carlo. Thank you both. Thank you. Well, Lord Such once stood on the platform during a famous by-election victory for Simon Hughes in Southwark. 
And earlier I asked Simon about his memories of that night in 1983. As you remember, he's a really nice guy. I met him then, I met him at other by-elections, I've talked to him privately. He was a really decent, nice guy who thought he could contribute something, as well as his promotion, which he clearly saw as an advantage, to liven up politics and sometimes to challenge people to be a bit more brave and a bit more bold. But some of the uh, policies he advocated actually became law, didn't they? Absolutely. I mean, he wasn't uh, wacky and off-beam and everything he said at all. He often tried, he had, he had a sound political view, he actually was interested in politics, he clearly was committed to politics, he wanted to change things and coming from where he did, he saw it as doing it in his zany way. He's probably made a, a more significant contribution to British politics than any other of those traditionally fringe and apparently slightly wacky parties and, and, and he did it because he had an interest and he often was thinking of good new ideas. And it, it wasn't just a frivolous campaign, was it? No, no, no. He, 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 David Such was trying to get issues before the public. Uh, the sort of issues he raised, the one that eventually uh, abolished the 11 plus, he campaigned in his early days about education and comprehensive schools and so on. Those were serious issues which mattered to him. Environmental issues mattered to him. Uh, dealing with a motor car mattered to him. Uh, space and, and uh, planning matters mattered. I mean, he interestingly, behind the scenes, was a serious and and pleasant and concerned politician, and he would have absolutely serious conversation with you. And when he found other people who were willing to be the combination of serious and zany that he was, he would encourage them to stand for local election. And some of his people stood as very good candidates around the country. Some have been elected, and all credit to them. Simon, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Okay.